Well, when I returned from my trip overseas, I started up my solar power system, and within uh, five days, it started glitching out on this side. The other side over there is fine. This side was very inconsistent. I power cycled it. It would be up and down and then pretty much just died. You can see the system was making power right through December 10th. Both systems were tracking, except the 116 system had this very strange glitch right here. But as we check uh, December 11th, you'll see that it had a problem starting up in the morning. It started and then died. And I power cycled and it died again. And I power cycled and then it continued for the rest of the day. And I thought it was just a momentary glitch, except on the 12th, uh, it just power cycle cycled and then died and wouldn't come back to life. And I had this problem all the way through December 28th. So like any other problem determination process, I started swapping out components and replacing things. First thing as I did is I swapped the end phase for one I bought as a spare for exactly this reason, always buy a spare, and it didn't fix the problem. Then I swapped out this connector, which is the DC input here, uh, it didn't fix the problem. I re-landed the wires in my little monitoring and isolation box. I pulled them out, re-tightened them, on everything in here didn't make any difference. I replaced this power socket and reconnected the wires inside, didn't make any difference. Last thing I did was I changed the MC4 connectors, put two new fresh connectors on the end of the wire, didn't make any difference. So basically this is almost an entirely new system. Oh, I did forget. I, f I physically replaced the monitoring Sonoff box with a new one. I had to flash the custom Tasmoda software on it, but I forgot one thing. In Tasmoda, you have to tell it what time zone you're in with a magic command in the console. It's not in the user interface. So this was actually delivering data to my MQTT server in Singapore, but since the timestamp was wrong, my node red script was throwing away some data. So I figured that out, fixed the time zone, but I'm still getting very inconsistent power delivery after basically swapping everything here except the module itself. So I went and I ordered some four, uh, six millimeter wire uh, new MC4 connectors and a proper MC4 crimper and I was going to jumper one panel over uh, to the other side essentially swapping panels input to the end phase to see if that would fix the problem but then I had a bit of a flash what have I not changed in the entire upstream from the input to the inverter all the way to the power grid Let's go have a look. And here we are in my little cabinet that holds the circuit breaker panel. This breaker is the incoming circuit from the end phase output. It has its own dedicated breaker. This is a new one. This is the old one. Guess what happened when I changed from the old one to the new one last night? And when the system powered up on the 29th, it woke up and it tracked, both systems are running. It's a very uh, cloudy day with uh, bands of clouds coming through, so it wasn't tracking exactly, but it woke up and made power all day. And today, it's the same story. It woke up and it's been making great power all day. So I think that has solved the problem. So all of those part substitutions, and it came down to the circuit breaker that was installed by my electrician when I did my condo renovation. So 
you know what that means. We're going to tear the circuit breaker apart and see if we can see anything interesting inside. Okay, here we are with the breaker in question. I've drilled out the four rivets and the case is ready to pop open. So let's see what we can find. I feel like Big Clive. Wow, I need to grow my beard out. Here we go. And, okay, it came out in two separate pieces. Okay, so if we look here, we've got some scorchy marks, a little bit of browned over plastic on a, it looks like it's got a mechanism that has a little bit of side to side tilt in it, but not too much. If we go up here and get rid of that latch clip, we can see that where the actually makes contact at the point where the, the breaker comes together and then pops apart either manually or if it detects a bad situation, we have a ton of corrosion on that contact point and on the point where it touches. So this, focus, this is the heart of our problem. This is why we were getting dodgy. Let's get a little more light in here if we can. We were getting dodgy contact because that is not uh, a good stable contact point. I'm kind of surprised it wasn't popping on its own, but I guess we never really had uh, a circumstance where the breaker would pop. It just got uh, corroded at the contact point and started giving us a bad connection that the inverter didn't like and kept shutting itself down. But we now have a, a shiny clean breaker inside and this one's going dump it in a hole somewhere to punish it forever. So, don't always look at the most obvious parts of a problem for a solution. It could be something very simple that you would not initially suspect. That's the lesson for the day. Hey, if you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my other content, I'd appreciate a subscribe. Take care and see you next time.